Good morning, church. Good morning, First United, the community of Berkeley Springs, and other brothers and sisters in Christ that go beyond our wonderful town. I want to welcome you to our online worship service this morning. I want to thank you for joining with us, and we all pray together that we are able to connect with God during this service this morning. Before we begin worshiping, I have a few announcements that I want to bring to your attention. Church will continue to be closed for in-person worship through today. Uh, the task force is meeting this Tuesday, February the 9th, to decide how to move forward. If you're interested in providing feedback to the task force about reopening or staying closed for in-person worship services, uh, please email me personally at jrider, J-R-I-D-E-R, -E at gofirst.org, or you can call the church office on Tuesday. Uh, for those of you that are on the email listserv, you have received a detailed email message outlining numerous ways to provide feedback. I would encourage all of you to provide some type of feedback, as this decision is hard regardless of the decision the task force makes moving forward. But please know, regardless of the decision, whether the vote is to come back in person or to remain virtual for a while, we will continue to provide the virtual services uh, to those of you who may not want to come out due to the pandemic. We certainly understand that. Also, if you worship with First United and would like to attend the task force meeting on Tuesday via Zoom, email me and let me know, and I can make sure that you get the link uh, to join us. Uh, announcement number two, since today is the first Sunday of the month, it would normally be Communion Sunday. However, since we have not been meeting for in-person worship services, communion is just not possible at the moment. If you are interested in receiving blessed communion elements, you can stop into the church office Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. And I can provide those for you or Karen can provide those for you um, as they will already be blessed. For those on the visitation list, or if you're not on the list but would like a visit, let me know, but I will be bringing yours with me when I come to visit, and you'll be hearing from me shortly uh, for a visit. Lent is quickly approaching us as Ash Wednesday is what? Wednesday, February the 17th. For those I visit, I will be bringing ashes in individual bags for you. For those that want ashes but are not on the visitation list, we do have um, small individual bags pre-packaged here at the church, and you can stop in the church and receive those bags if you, if you would like those ashes for Ash Wednesday. This is obviously due to the pandemic, and I will not personally physically touch your head, but you may have those ashes if you would like uh, to do them to yourself. The Ash Wednesday service regardless of the decision of the task force, will be virtual no matter what, and that's simply for the reason of cleaning, okay? Announcement number four, prayer requests. Please use firstunitedprayer at gmail.com or call the church office and leave a message uh, with your request. Uh, please know that if you call the church office, messages are only received on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Announcement number five, stewardship. On behalf of the finance team, I want to continue to ask for your support with your tithings and offerings while we do remain closed for in-person worship, but open for church hours and virtual worship services. It does still take your blessings and givings to keep our wonderful congregation up and running. First United is doing very well so far because everyone continues to support our wonderful congregation. And please know as your pastor, I appreciate that very much. There are numerous ways you can continue to give to our church. You can mail a check into the church. You can drop off your tithings into the slot in the side door of the church. Uh, you can bring them into the church office during church office hours, or you can use our online giving service. Um, if you need assistance with that, you can certainly reach out to Chuck Marsh at 304-258-2605 or by emailing him at marsh bc at aol.com. Announcement number six, Amazon Smile. Remember, if you're doing your shopping on Amazon, we would encourage you to use Amazon Smile and designate First United Methodist Church in Berkeley Springs 
as a donation recipient. And number seven, lastly, please continue to keep yourselves and your family safe during the pandemic. We here at First United want to encourage you to stay on top of all CDC recommendations and health announcements in our area. And we all continue to pray for one another during these challenging times. That is all the announcements that I have this morning. So now let us all prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Will you please join with me now in our call to worship? God comes into a world filled with uncertainties and darkness. God seeks out the voids of belief and conviction. God is the candle shining in the darkness of our days. God is the light of our lives. That light allows us to give love. Let us all now shine and provide love to all people. Will you bow your heads for our opening prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to come and worship you this morning in humble adoration. While we still cannot be together in person, we know that your Holy Spirit allows us all to be connected as a family of Christ through other means. And Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit come into our hearts this morning so that we all can know and sense your presence here with us today. We know from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit within you. Allow our bodies to be temples. And Lord, as we listen to our reflective hymns and songs, offer numerous prayers, hear your message for us today, and listen to your scriptures being read. We ask that you speak to us and help us to learn and grow to be better disciples. We pray all these things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now... Let us take time to reflect with our opening hymn.
is now time for our sharing of joys and concerns. I have a few here that I want to bring to your attention. In terms of joys, Tiffany continues to make progress with physical therapy. While it is slower than what we have anticipated, it is still progress nonetheless. And so we want to praise God for that continued progress. Uh, she still isn't walking on her own yet without that walker, but she is determined and I'm pretty sure it's going to happen soon. So just please continue to keep her in your prayers. Also, if you can continue to keep her in your prayers as well, Tuesday we will be heading down to the University of Virginia uh, so that she can receive another scan, kind of do a follow-up appointment. So uh, just uh, pray for travel and good news uh, for us as well and specifically for her. Uh, another joy, this past week I had the opportunity to meet an individual from the German-American uh, radio station in Washington, D.C., and I just want to share with you how much of a joy that was. Um, the individual came down and asked me a couple questions in terms of how the pandemic has impacted the church and, and our wonderful community, and that was just a joy. I really enjoyed that. I have no clue how to even listen to it, and I have no clue when it's going to be broadcasted, but I enjoy learning about cultures, and I enjoy meeting people, and so I just want to share that joy with you. There are numerous concerns here, though, I really need to bring to your attention so that we can continue to lift these individuals up in prayer, as well as families. We want to continue to pray for the Martin and Jordan families um, as they mourn the loss of uh, Dallas and Dia's sister, Kimberly Jordan. We also want to continue to pray for the Zimmerman family with the passing of Paul Zimmerman. We want to continue prayers for Richie Harrington, continue prayers for healing and specifically relief of pain. Uh, Linda Walter and has requested prayer for her stepdaughter, Lori Miller. Uh, Lori will be having shoulder replacement surgery tomorrow on February the 8th. Um, and this will be a long and painful recovery. So pray for God's hands to be with the surgeon and the medical team. Please pray for Dennis Everett, who tested positive for COVID. Um, he was transferred to Winchester Medical Center um, and awaiting a bed. That was as of Wednesday. Uh, regardless of the status now, I'm sure he's still recovering from that. So please continue to pray for healing. Also continue prayers for Ronnie Grove, who's a friend of Steve and Nancy Dickey. Uh, pray for healing there. Will you now bow your heads for a moment of prayer? Father God, this morning we want to stop and lift up several concerns that we have this morning. And Lord God, while many times we look at lists like this and we see how large they are, we know to you they are not large for you can handle anything. This morning, Lord God, we want to specifically mention a few families and individuals. We want to pray for Tiffany. We want to pray for the families of the Martins and the Jordans and the Zimmermans. We want to pray for Richie Harrington and his family. We want to pray for Lori Miller and the doctors and the nurses mending to her care. We lift up Dennis Everett to you this morning and Ronnie Grove as well. Father God, we know that you know their needs and their concerns. Hear those prayer requests this morning. Father God, we also lift up all the individuals on our prayer list as well as any unspoken requests that we have, Lord God, that just because they're not formally mentioned, it doesn't mean you do not know the needs or concerns. And Lord God, we pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us all to pray and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
This morning, our scripture lesson is going to come from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Hear these words. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. And when I became an adult, I put an end to the childish ways. For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then we will see face to face. And now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So this month, we're going to be exploring and learning about the word love. That's how we're going to begin our new sermon series. And we're really going to talk about the definition of love, which is really what we're going to look at today. Um, over the next couple of weeks, we're also going to talk about topics like unconditional love and even how love is the greatest and most powerful emotion that we not only feel, but we act upon as a verb. You know, as I was preparing uh, for this week's message and kind of how to define love and specifically Christian love, I couldn't help but think about just the world that we live in, kind of pop culture, what we do as a society. Let's kind of start there and talk about how the world kind of sees love and what we do to celebrate that love. Think about this with me. We celebrate what? Valentine's Day, which will be this month. We give gifts during Christmas to our loved ones. We volunteer at local charities and organizations out of love. We cry over the loss of our loved ones. And even the entertainment industry, right? Makes millions of dollars a year on music and and movies all centered around one word, and that's love. I mean, let's not debate that, right? I know many of you are guilty, me included. We enjoy a good love story, don't we? A good love song. Many of you might reflect on your, your wedding songs or songs that you've heard that have had a lot of meaning to you. You know, it has been estimated that 100 million let me repeat that, 100 million love songs have been recorded. And almost every movie we watch has some type of a romantic interest or love of family or even a love between friends. We love to love. Now, personally, I am very thankful in regards to pop culture and that it has taken a lot of this love interest and created some of our greatest songs that we know, right? 
many of you are going to be like, Pastor, you need to get a better playlist here. But I love some of these. Think about it. How Deep Is Your Love by the Bee Gees? Total Eclipse of the Heart by Bonnie Taylor? Queen? Crazy Little Thing Called Love? God Only Knows by the Beach Boys? And even Elvis Presley can't help falling in love. No, I'm not going to sing to you, so don't panic. Even movies are the same way, right? The Notebook, The Bodyguard, Dirty Dancing. All movies that we love and the entertainment industry has profited from. But why do we love those so much? The point is, is how love is mentioned in all avenues of our lives. But my big question to you this morning is, how much do we really understand love? What is love? And specifically, what is a Christian love? What's love got to do, got to do with it? Now, thankfully, for us as believers, love is the foundation of everything that we know and believe as Christians. Because we understand love to be more than just a feeling or a noun. It's actually a verb. It's an action. See, too many people believe and sometimes teach that love is just a feeling and it's just an emotion. Yes, feelings and emotions are involved in love. No question about that. In fact, that feeling of love is, is one that you never want to go away, right? But really, the greatest part of love is an action-oriented idea. Many marriages, even among Christians, they're failing because they value feelings over actions. In my ministerial career so far, I have counseled, counseled a few couples who tell me that they just they don't feel the same love that they once did. In other words, they, they fell out of love. But see, there really is no falling out of love or falling into love. We can fall out of bed or fall out of the bathtub, but typically we grow to love someone over time. This love for one another grows from what we see them do for us and for other people. And it is that love that surpasses all basic human understanding and requires the Holy Spirit inside of us to really understand its power and its might. As I was researching this past week, I came across an excellent example by a man named Jack Wellman. And I want to share this simple illustration with you. Quote, now I imagine if Christ, just before the cross, went to the garden and thought, I hate this feeling. I don't feel like doing this. How would that have changed history? Unquote. Let me repeat that. Jack Wellman says, now imagine if Christ, just before the cross, went to the garden and thought, I hate this feeling. I don't feel like doing this. If all of that was based on feeling and he didn't feel like going to the cross, how would that have changed history? That illustration has brought me chills for days. But it's so right. Love really is an action. Sure, there are emotions that are involved, but it's mainly an action. I think many of us understand this more than we give ourselves credit for, actually. Love is going to pick up your kid from a friend's house in the middle of the night, even though you feel sick because they want to come home. You might be irritated at them, but you go pick them up anyway because you love them. Love is holding your loved one's hand while he or she takes his or her last breath. Love is hugging someone near and dear to your hearts and 
offering them your forgiveness even after they have yelled and screamed at you. That's love. Love is chewing out your sibling because he or she got into drugs or alcohol and you chew them out, yes, out of love because you know they can do better. Love is crying over the loss of a loved one. Love is serving people at a local soup kitchen. Love is an action. Yes, has feelings, but it's mainly an action. There are no other passages in our Bible that is more well known than 1 Corinthians chapter 13 when it comes to love. While this scripture passage is often read at weddings, as it should be, I think it's also important we take a look at the words used and what we're being taught about what love really is, because we all need this constant reminder. So I want to kind of break apart this passage a little bit here. The first thing I quickly notice when I read the passage is how Paul says, if I have no love, I am basically just making noise, like a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. So in other words, what's Paul telling us? I can make all the noise I want without love, but it doesn't accomplish anything except just make a sound. I can love someone all I want, but unless I do something, all I'm doing is just making noise. But when you add love into the picture, you become more than just a sound, but also a vision that has an action. Love is the most critical part of our faith, and Paul wanted to make sure the Corinthians understood that. And we need to as well. We could have all the faith in the world, all the faith in the world to move mountains, but if we have no love, we are what? Nothing. We will also gain nothing without love because God's love for the world is what allowed us to have Jesus Christ, the Savior of that world, to come and save us. And with that love came the help of sending his son. For God so loved the world. He loved the world. So what did he do? What was his action? He sent us his son. Love in action. And then Paul gets even more specific, right? Starting in verse 4, what does he say? Love is what? Patient, kind, not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. And it does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. But now I consider this the fun part. How is all this in action, right? Pastor, you keep telling us that love is in action, but I know some of what Paul says requires emotion and feeling. Yes, I go back to what I said earlier. That is certainly true. But don't you think patience takes some action? Don't you think kindness has some form of an action? Don't you think not being rude takes some kind of an action? Even if you have to bite your tongue literally, it still takes an action. And man, it's not always easy. Let me give you some additional real life examples about this. Now, before I do this, please do not point at your spouses. That's really not going to help this situation any. But here are these examples. Love is patient. As you have to sit an extra hour at the doctor's office and you don't get angry and you don't get upset with the office manager or administrative assistant because 
you know they must be late, most likely because they're helping someone else. So because love is patient, you exercise patience by reading a magazine, praying, texting on your phone, or just simply sitting there. You're not showing patience if you go up and you yell and get irritable. Love is patient when your son or daughter keeps coming home drunk at night. And while you give him or her the speech and keep trying to help guide them, you still remain patient with them because you know they have relapsed after they've been sober for three years and you know they can do it. Yes, you might get upset with them, but you remain patient and loving and keep telling them you can do this, you can get back on track. Love is patient when your spouse or family member gets upset with you because they're worried about test results because he or she may have cancer. But you remain patient with him or her because you know the reason why. If you really want to test your patience, go stand in the Walmart checkout line. And then you'll really know how to love people and practice the art of patience. Many of these examples also include our calling to not be rude in the process, especially when you get frustrated with an elderly man or woman driving below the speed limit on 522 when you're almost late for an appointment. All of this is intertwined. Love is bits and pieces of all this, but it all comes together under the umbrella of love. True Christian love requires action and control of our emotions. One of the fruits of the Spirit mentioned in the book of Galatians, right, requires self-control. Why? Because it takes self-control to keep our emotions in check, which in return help to regulate our actions, which in return can dictate if we show Christian love or not. Now, don't make any mistake here either. Because sometimes there is a need for tough Christian love, like discipline and teaching your children. But you still do it out of love and not hatred. Remember, love can bear and endure all things. We humans struggle a lot with showing love, not really in the moments where we feel good, those moments is where we excel. It's really when times get tough that we have a hard time showing love. I understand that as well as I often find myself failing at showing love when others may need it the most. It's easy to give up on others. It's easy to run away. That's the easy way out. But did God run away from us? Did Jesus run away from people or did he go to them out of love? People that society would have rejected, he went to them out of love. Action. People in society that no one else wanted to affiliate with, but Jesus went to them and provided hope and a peace that passes all understanding. Brothers and sisters in Christ, that is the love that never ends. Even at the end of our earthly lives, that love doesn't end either. This is why a faith, hope, and love, the big three, the greatest of these is what? It is love. So you want to know what love really is? What is the true definition of love? <clears throat> it's when you watch your spouse suffer, knowing there isn't anything you can do to help them, but you hold their hands, you tell them you love them, and you stay connected as one until they take their last breath. Love is forgiving someone, even though you have done what seems to be a hundred times, but you forgive them because Christ in return forgives us hundreds and hundreds of times. 
By the way, that forgiveness that you keep offering that friend is the same reason why you're able to stay friends for decades. Christian love is not holding grudges or making someone pay for one another's mistakes. Love encompasses all things, which is why it is the greatest. Love encompasses all things, but true love is what you see in Jesus Christ. That is our model of love. As I said in the beginning, during the next three weeks, we will be studying certain aspects of love in detail. And I want to encourage you to join us every week this month as we explore some very difficult parts of showing love, unconditional love in particular. But to close this morning, I just want to leave you with some final thoughts. What is the bottom line here? The bottom line is that love is what a person chooses to do, not what a person chooses to feel. Let me repeat that. The bottom line is that love is what a person chooses to do, not what a person chooses to feel. God so loved the world because he felt like it. Yes, he does love us, but that love required an action, and that included the supreme sacrifice of his one and only son. That was the ultimate love in action. Think about it. Pray about it. What is God telling you this morning? May God continue to bless all of us this morning as we reflect on the true definition of Christian love. Amen. That's been nothing they need to see and believe. He led to the rugged tree, one of which he cried enough for his pain before our death. Very same tree that conquered death, an unfair deal on the part of Christ. He got my sin, I got eternal life. Small talk is a better choice The way to avoid your voice I need to feel the dust in my knees And lead them to the tree One which you cry in the forest pain before our death very same tree that conquered death An unfair deal on the part of Christ He got my sin, I got eternal life Make me the breath of God And I show them the one that means the most of me They'll see the face of love Follow me and lead him to the tree. Can't you just believe where you're taking me for eternity? Yeah, for eternity, for eternity. Make me the breath of God, and I show them the one that means the most to me. 
They'll see the face of love being touched by the very one that died upon the tree. Will you please join with me now in the affirmation of our faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you all for joining us this morning for worship. I pray that you have felt God's presence in your heart and were able to connect with God this morning. Will you now please receive the benediction? And now as you go, may Christ continue to be the light into the path that you walk. May your hearts continue to be filled with the Holy Spirit as we all put love into action. Help us to remember the importance of love. Go now, go in peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God be with you as you go.